It was the most incredible sunsets I've ever seen. That wasn't seen. really soft. Like I know you wanted to say something like they were gorgeous. No, I would they not. Were beautiful. I would not use incredible that. Incredible is like Spencer landed an incredible lift today. So, beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. It is the Built by Vitality podcast. My name is Steve Pinkerton, and I'm with Philip Lewis over here. Oh, thanks. See, Philip Lewis. Yeah, yeah, I like how you're doing I want it now. To steal, I want to steal it from you. And this is going to be part two of our previous podcast that talked about some of the lessons that uh, uh, I learned throughout the first two phases of my life. We were, we, were into, we were through the kid phase, into the Marine Corps phase, and I, and I left off with uh, the grow where you're planted, where I had just um, been kind of picked last for kickball and uh, sent out into the city with uh, Major Quinlan at the time, who was my company commander, and I was filling a role for one of his, his uh, uh, lieutenants. And he clearly did not want uh, me a part of that team. And so that's where we're going to kind of, we're going to dive back in. I'll, I'll kind of wrap that story up, but I think it, it does apply to, uh, a lot of different areas that, that I think later on in life help me understand from, from a different perspective, um, why that happens. So, uh, all right, without further ado, do you remember where we were at? You left off. The sun was going down oh, over man. Rawa yeah. or something. And I was like, man, if I could have just been in that vehicle to take a picture. I, I will That's tell you what this. I was thinking. I'll, I'm going to find some stuff for you, and we'll post it. Uh, we'll, I'll have Philip post it. And, and anybody that knows me knows that what I'm, what I'm about to say does not sound like me. But at, at the risk of sounding a little soft, I'm going to say this. Are you sure? This might be, there I might have, be a bunch of bleeps in here. <laughs> no. I have like... 14 to 16 pictures of sunsets in Rawa. Oh. The, it was the most incredible sunsets mm. I've ever seen. That wasn't seen. really soft. Like, I know you wanted to say something like they were gorgeous. No, I or would they not. They were beautiful. I would not use incredible that. Incredible is like Spencer landed an incredible lift today. So, <laughs> beautiful, gorgeous. Just say it. No. See how it feels? No. Come it on, feel Steve. Good. Just say no. it. <laughs> but I will tell you. It, you know, Rawa was right along the Euphrates River. So you'd, you'd be on the top of these buildings and you'd be setting up security or whatever, you, whatever you're doing and the sun starts to go down over by the, over by the river. And man, it was the brightest. Uh, I just, I can't explain it. I could just tell you that uh, uh, I'm going to get some pictures. I got them somewhere and, and they were... It's got to be like were, out of a movie or something, it really right? You was, just can't... It really was. And, but that's what it was like when I was, when I was riding that vehicle. It... it, it Again, it's, there are certain times in your life where you can just, it's, it's etched forever in your brain. And that's one of those experiences where, man, I had goosebumps because I was, I was scared. I was excited. I was nervous. Um, and, and here I am riding into the city. You've got for somebody to, that don't want you. Yeah. For someone that, that wants no part of me and doesn't, doesn't trust me. There's probably people in the city that don't want you. Oh, they don't the want The guy me. doesn't want you with him in his group. Yep. But you're like, man, this is gorgeous. This is what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. And so here I am. I'm riding out there. And we get into the city. And I go meet, I go meet my platoon. So you get about 32 Marines. They had just lost their platoon commander. So they, were, you know, they weren't super pumped to see me, especially knowing that my background is not LAV. My background is artillery. So now they are ready. It's, it, it, would be the, it would be the same as... Uh, nothing against burn boot camp, but it would be like a burn boot camp instructor coming in and teach CrossFit. Yeah, it's the same field, but very different. And Everything. These, these guys probably don't know you like your other they group, met me, crew you assembled. So these people don't the trust first you. Time yeah, right there in the city. Deployed. So you don't have the trust you were talking None. about. They don't trust your decisions. Zero, zero. And so, uh, you know, right before I left, I'll tell you, I was walking out of that office and. Sparky, Colonel Renforth, uh, looked at me and said, hey, remember what I said, grow where you're planted, and that was it. He didn't tell me good luck. He didn't tell me, hey, you're going to be fine. No. All he said was grow where you're planted, and that's all I could do. So I got out to the city. We got to, I, I met my Marines, and all I did was I went on every single patrol. I, I didn't take control of the patrol. I just, I was a, 
I, I was a I was a part of the team. I was a part of that squad that they they were in charge, and I just I was a bystander. I was just trying to figure out where everything was, get my bearings of the city. Imagine being dropped off in you know downtown Davidson, never knowing where where never had seen where that is, driving there, and you're walking in a four or five mile radius through every single street, and you got to know where every house what house is labeled. Every house has a as a uh, a letter and a number. It's it's, it's Charlie three or Delta five, and and these guys knew everything about that city. I knew nothing. I couldn't get around the block. I didn't know what what anything was, and uh, so that was that was a part of my life that I think if I would have taken more time and thought it through, I might have chickened out. I might have said, you know what, sir, I'm not I'm not trained for this. I'm not ready for this, and maybe passed on that opportunity. But I look back, and man, I'm telling you, that is, that was a fork in the road that my life changed from that point on because I don't know what would be more tougher for me than that right there. And I'm not saying that so you think I'm this amazing Marine. That's not the point. The point is, what I'm trying to get at is very rarely, and it was dumb luck, that that I had that opportunity to grow and, and have that type of discomfort. And, and we talk about it in CrossFit all the time, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Well, there is no more uncomfortable feeling than being completely alone with people that do not trust you, that people that would rather not have you there and have to build that relationship with every single one of them. And, uh, and this is real life. This isn't training. Yeah, yeah. So you had to do it during real life stuff. Yep. And it, and it worked out. I, I, you know, again, I was lucky to have some really, really awesome Marines that took me under their wing, that helped me, that taught me the things I needed to know. And then I just used the skills that the Marine Corps gave me to, to make the best decisions I could. And by the, by the end of that, uh, man, I almost... Uh, did what's called a lateral move out of artillery into LAVs with that group uh, because I got along so well with them. The, the command and I got along really well. Uh, uh, and it was really tough to leave those guys. And, and that was, I think, the most memorable time. In my 39 years of life, that six-month period, I, I've never had more growth during that time. I've never had more ups and downs, but I've never had more fun than that right there because again when you when you have the all-time lowest point that you can remember man does it make you appreciate the highs does it make you appreciate when things work out the right way and uh, that struggle is important so you know that's the third you know, I got accountability uh, I've talked about grow where I'm planted uh, and then the third coming up is uh, never assume you're the smartest person in the room and I think that is something that is is fairly easy for me because I'm I'm very rarely ever <laughs> the smartest person in the room, and I think that was one of the mistakes in the Marine Corps that that we had when we deployed is you kind of had this feeling that you were going up against these illiterate, uh, untrained, unskilled, um, uh, an unskilled enemy, and the reality was. It was far from that. Uh, maybe they didn't have the best weapons, so they weren't as accurate as we were. But you were talking about you're going into their hometown. They know it like the back of their hand. They've been in that. They, they've been in that city since they were day they were born, and we've been there for a month or two. And they know everybody. We know nobody. That's their so, house. That's like that's it. They're walking around at night to grab something. They don't even have to turn a light on. They know exactly. every corner. Imagine someone breaking into this gym and we shut all the lights off. Who has the advantage? <laughs> I'll, I'll put, I'll put, look. That's why I, I took Spencer to a hotel that there night. There you go. Exactly. I was scared for his life That's in case whole, you came in. We will take it. We will come back to that one. We will I do that I promise you that. We'll do that episode 504. Yeah, once we have more than 17 followers, <laughs> subscribers, we'll, we'll, we'll give the Spence uh, hotel story. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's, that's where you start to become complacent when you when you when you think you're the smartest person in the room when you think that someone else can't be a step or two steps ahead of you there's going to be a problem i promise uh, when you think that 
uh, you you have the best business plan when you think that when you have a, a staff meeting that there's not a, someone in that meeting that has a better idea than you do or that can execute an idea better than better than you can man you, you, that's a dangerous that's a dangerous belief system to have and I think the Marine Corps did a really good job that it doesn't matter if you're a private or you're a sergeant major or you're a general everybody's got ideas and you better be able to uh, instill the confidence in these Marines that if, if they have a plan that they think is good, they should be able to approach an officer and say, Hey, sir, here's what I think the plan needs to be. I think, I think we're, we're overlooking this. And there might be times when you're like, you know what, got it. Thank you. But this is what we're going to do. And there's other times when you're like, oh, man, I did not, I did not I'm think glad about thought that. Of that. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. And uh, now all of a sudden, you're, you're a team. Now all of a sudden you're not just, it's not a dictatorship where they they do it out of fear. They, they're they listening to you because they know, again, back to that accountability piece. So I think that translates into the business world, which we'll talk about later on, but huge, huge advantage when you look at yourself as just another person in the room, not the smartest person in the room. You should never think that. There's always somebody working harder there's always somebody that's smarter there's always somebody that's had had more experience than you and you your goal in life is to catch that next person you got to catch somebody uh and you're just picking them off one by one uh and then last but not least is just a a, a, it's a catchphrase i've always loved it's it's the seven p's uh proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance so if 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 you don't plan you're not going to be able to execute this. And uh, in the Marine Corps, that's all we did is plan and train. And, you know, we'd, we'd draw it out. We'd uh, rehearse it. We did rehearsals. You know, we did hundreds of patrols, and it didn't matter. We were five and a half months into our, uh, into our deployment. We'd done 300 patrols. Maybe I've done 320, whatever. And... We still circled the entire group up, and we went through uh, an op order every single time. We, we, we did the patrol order from start to finish, went through the radio frequencies, the, the, uh, everything, everything that was, was ingrained in us, we still rehearsed. And that's, that's when we come back to, I, like, like Philip said, I'd rather have more time to over-prepare than be rushing around because when you rush, you make mistakes. And Little things like at the gym, meal prepping. If yeah. I don't do it on Saturday or Sunday, I think Monday and Tuesday might hit up some old Chick-fil-A, some Wendy's, something, and it's, I'm yeah. going to feel like crap during the workouts or whatever, just health in general. So you got to prep so you're not rushing around through the week trying to find something. That can go with a lot of stuff. If, think about it from a coaching perspective. So now you're a coach. And oh, you're show up on the one way, minute before class, and and you pull up your your on your way. You're walking to the gym. You know you're going to be cutting it close, so you pull up your Wi-Fi on the way, and you're looking at what the workout is, and you're trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? You have no idea how many people are in your class. You have no idea. Uh, does anything need to be moved around? Is everything ready to go? What your warm up's going to be? Yep. If you're going to run two heats, and then you try and wing it. So then you're like, ah, oh, well, I've been here the for scoring or nine something years. I'm just going to wing it. Yeah, you can't. No, I don't care how long you've been here. People will see right the through. The members it. will eat you alive. Yep. They're like, well, the morning class didn't do it that yep. way. Like, well, you didn't look at the notes or look at the look at what was supposed to be done in class. Yep, and that's important. And and, and I think that goes back to it again. Like Philip said. You can take any scenario, and if you don't plan correctly or, 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 or plan properly, it's not going to go well. And you know what? Here's the, here's the problem. You're going to get lucky. You're going you're gonna to get lucky one time, and then people are going to think, oh, well, maybe I don't, I don't need have to, plan to plan this way. Yeah. Uh, but nine times out of ten, it's going to come back and bite you. My photos and videos and things that I do, I've noticed most of the time if there's some type of pre-planning – they come out way better. So if I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a shoot outside tomorrow at noon, I probably need to plan to bring a filter for my camera. I know I need to plan to have it on this set. I need to know that. If I just show up and I don't have that filter, the photo is going to be way worse. It's yep. going to be harder on me on the back end when I edit something. Yep. So I just plan for that stuff now ahead of time. Yep, the seven Ps go a long way. Um, and, and so that was really the four 
you know, I look back, those are the four that are the most memorable. Again, I could create 14 podcasts, but I'd lose everybody because you get annoyed with my stories. Uh, but uh, those are the ones that stick out the most from my time in the Marine Corps. And I think those helped set the stage for any type of success I've had in business can come straight from uh, those uh, characteristics, those lessons that I learned. As an entrepreneur, I think th these might be the most applicable to our listeners, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what you guys think. The first one, and these are in no particular order, the first one is don't take things so personal. Uh, in, in the first, I would say, six or seven years of Vitality, when I had a member leave or, or, or somebody stopped coming or, you know, whatever happened, it would really, it would like, it would shake my, my resolve. Like, I was like, man, I wonder why he doesn't or she doesn't like me. Why are they leaving to go Even to Even if they gym? moved or something, yeah. it would bother you? It would bother me like I did something wrong. Did they move because of me? Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and, and, what you, and what you find is over the years, it's okay. You, you, it, people need change. People, people desire change. And after you've been open two or three years, think about how long that is. When you, when you look back at who goes to a global gym for three years in a row, like usually there's this break, usually there's something that happens. Yeah. Somebody transitions to a different place. They try something else. Diets the same way. They go from Weight Watchers to keto to whatever it might be. And people just don't stick with one thing. Yeah. So it's, it's not fair for me to expect someone to stay with me for 11 years and it just took me a while to not take everything so personally and it's not that they don't value my service or if if everybody wants a discount i i, I get that it's okay um it doesn't mean that they don't like me and i think that is um something that a lot of new entrepreneurs struggle with is they they Everything that happens in their business, they take very personal because they're so vested into it. That kind of goes back to managing your emotions or handling yeah. them. Like, if you let that bother you, it's going to trickle down and affect everybody else. Yep. yep. Because then you'll you will treat that person that's leaving. Maybe you don't treat them as the way you should. Which you should be excited for them. Be happy for them that they're going to go try a new gym or try something different. Or they want to go. Well, train if they want to come back. Lifting. You'd yeah. be like, oh, so why? So you can leave again? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. That's going to keep a member. That's yep. going to keep somebody. Exactly. Uh, so that's that's a big one that I think most people, it just is a matter of time before they kind of, I don't want to say grow out of that, but you, you'll get to the point where you'll understand and see it from the other perspective. It's like Steve has this fear that Ferrari or somebody's going to hire me when they see a couple of my videos. Yeah. I told, I told Steve, don't worry about that. I said, man, when they see, you're going to be like, man, this guy's gym videos are great. <laughs> I'd like him to shoot a Ferrari video for us in Italy going around a mountain. And obviously, Philip would say no. I'd say no. I'd be like, no, nah, I'm happy where I'm at. That's like, what I'm talking about. Yeah. And he did sign a 10-year non-compete. <laughs> so it's, and it's actually a, a nationwide non-compete. I'll send out my personal email so y'all can reach me. <laughs> don't go through Steve. <laughs> um, next one. You can't please everyone. This is equally important because we spend the majority of our time trying to keep everybody happy, and that will be one of the most draining things that you can do. Uh, I think whether uh, it's – if I tried to make everybody happy, I would have a 7.13 a.m. class. <laughs> I'd have a boot camp class. at My Evo Fit class would be uh, 6.41 in the evening. We'd have a 9.30 p.m. class just for Glenn and Jerry. Yeah, and, and by the way, that is a perfect example about how hard it is to do this because, you know, Glenn Walker is somebody that, uh, man, I, I love that guy. Glenn's awesome. He's, he's awesome, but he's got his schedule was set up in a way that when we went to a 5 and 6.15 p.m. class in the evening, which was the best for the gym, it was the best for the majority of the clients that I had, he was one of those guys that, that became really affected by it because of his schedule. And unfortunately... I asked him about that. I said, Glenn, I said, can you come to some of the morning classes? What time do you have to be at work? He said, well, I know I'm going to have to be at work till 9.30 or 10. I said, well, so you can't come to the 5 a.m., the 6 a.m., 7.30. He was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm sleeping. I said, okay. But, I, you know, but that's a perfect example of, you know, you hate, you hate doing that. But every decision that you make... 
there's going to be somebody that doesn't like it. And that's okay. Uh, we can't make everybody happy as long as we make the right decisions for the majority of the people that we, the clients that we have, then, then that's all we can do. That's all, that's all I can ask for. And this comes back to trust. It comes back to do our clients trust the staff here at Vitality to make the best decisions for their fitness goals, their health goals, or whatever it might be. And it takes time to build that trust. But I think someone that's been here for you know a year or longer has no issues hitting that I believe button and saying, gosh, I think my chances of being healthy and fit are better here than anywhere else I'm going to go. And that's our goal every day is to get people to trust that we're making the right decisions for them. Uh, but if someone doesn't like my programming, you know, if I changed my programming every time someone said, hey, I don't know if you should be doing it this way, you know, and, and I look, I'm not saying I don't appreciate the feedback. I do appreciate the feedback. But there's also a level of I have to be confident that I've been doing this 11 years. Someone that's been coming here for two months might not have the complete picture of, of where we've come and where we've uh, progressed through over the last 11 years. Well, for people that's never been here or out of state or somebody, somebody that's not listening or viewing this or never met you, yep. um, give them a quick rundown of this building. Like, what does it offer? What's in here? Like, you talk about programming and CrossFit stuff like you give them a quick rundown, a boot camp, a CrossFit, personal training, what can you do here? Yep, you're talking about nutrition, you're talking about the whole gambit, you got a juice bar. There are all these things that you can do, and so, someone might pick out just one little piece of that and say, oh, I don't I don't like that, and that's okay. Uh, but it's, it's up to us to provide the greatest experience for that individual possible. And, um, and sometimes it's okay to pass on somebody. Sometimes it might not be a good fit and that's okay. But the last thing you want to do is beg someone to be a part of this community. And just because you don't want to upset them or just because you don't want to make them, you know, angry with you, it's okay to say no. Yeah. And I think people can, can get a lot out of not everybody's a good fit. So that's all I can, that's all I'll say is, you know, don't think that every single person's the right client for you because it's, it's not the case. Um, another one, the third one I would say is implementation over ideas. Everybody's got ideas. That, that's the easiest part of being an entrepreneur are the ideas. Anybody can sit around. Uh, I told Philip when I run in the mornings on Mondays and Fridays, I'll come up with two or three podcast ideas just because I'm running by myself. I'm not listening to anything. And I'm just, a lot of times I'll talk to myself and I'll, I'll, I'll talk through what do I think some of the talking points would be if this was going to be a, a, a podcast episode. What, is that, what does that sound like? And by the time I get done, I'll write them all down. I'll come up to my office and then I'll, I'll comb through them again and, and, and eliminate some of those. But the ideas are easy. What's tough is taking that idea and actually implementing it. That's what separates someone that is successful and someone that is, you know, just kind of hanging on uh, and, and, and maybe waiting for the end to inevitably come. It's like 18 or 20 minutes into a podcast and then you realize you didn't hit the record button when we started. Has that ever happened to you? No. No. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure it happened to, uh, to me two days ago and you were the one that didn't hit the record <laughs> button. But yes, um, the, it, it's... And that's so important because people think that, oh, I've got this great idea. But to get the idea out of your head and into, into fruition, the amount of uh, curves and, and, and roadblocks you're going to run into and problems you're going to have to solve and, and the number of failures you're going to have to go through before it actually works – is just it's a massive number and so many people they hit that first roadblock and they and they always fall back in that saying well if it was meant to be it would just fall into place if it was meant to be and that i'm telling you it's like the same as someone calling me bud i can't stand it you know 
Got you, it. You ever get that? Like when someone says, hey, bud. Yeah, bud. Like, no, I I'm not, yeah. not. No, I'm not. If you want to call me buddy, I guess. But <laughs> After not, we work out today, right bud. when you're done, I'm going to say, good job, bud. Yeah. There's bud, and then there's, <laughs> I only have like two hot buttons. Call me bud or snap your fingers at me. Oh. You know, Lambert snapped his fingers at me one time. And I was like, <laughs> Lambo, <laughs> don't you ever do that again. <laughs> what? Why did he do it, though? He was, what trying was to get it? My, he was trying to get my attention, and he just he snapped his fingers a couple times, and it was, it was just got excited about something, and I would, it's like okay <laughs> Poor but, Lambert. Um, you know it, it, but I think you, you, that that saying falls in that same it just makes my skin crawl because it, it is so wrong uh, no it's not just going to fall into place it's not just going to happen oh if you find the right job it's just going to be so easy everything falls into place no negative you are going to be forcing a square peg into a round hole. You're going to deal with 15 things that are going to go wrong. You're going to have 10 people telling you you're an idiot. And it's not going to work for a year. And then, if you stick with it, then it will work. I think the best ideas are one, whether it's a job or your idea you have, is something that you love so much that you would do it for free get semi good at it and then figure out a way to make money at it. Yeah. Cuz if you'll do it for free and you really enjoy it so much you'll do some stuff like that, then I think if you figure out how to make money at it it's going to work every time. I definitely think that uh you have to love your job and if you don't then you have to put a plan together uh to figure out how to get one that you do love or, or find something you or like. Or put the put the tools in place to make you love it more. If I you did want- it for years. Like I would wake up and when my alarm clock would go off instantly, I was like, God, I have to go do this. Yep. I, I got to go. Do- that is not a good way to live. A lot of people live like that. They're strapped. They got to pay bills, whatever. But if you can figure out something where you wake up and you look forward to going there, you shouldn't really be look- looking forward to Friday. Oh, great. It's the weekend. You should, yep. you should almost look forward to Monday. Like, ah, I get to go do this again. It's so true. You know, I, 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 and I tell people this all the time. I'm very lucky to do what I do because I really do love it. There's things about it that, that are frustrating, obviously, uh, but the majority of what I do, I love. And and I never, I can't tell you the last time a Monday rolled around that I wasn't excited to to get up and, and, and go to work. And whether it's Sundays, I, I, I love coming here Sundays and just, you know, putzing around and setting up for Monday and putting things away if they're left out, whatever. It doesn't bother me at all. I just love, I love being here and I love this job. So f- for me, it's it's very easy to do that. I think that people just, like like you said, you need to put the, the systems in place to make it. If you want more autonomy, guess what? It's going to take more work. You're going to have to prove that you are uh, irreplaceable. Once you prove you're irreplaceable, well, guess what? Your boss is going to say, well, wow, I can't, imagine doing this job without yeah. Philip. So you know what? If he wants to take Fridays off, we'll do Monday through Thursday. But if but the problem is, is it is, is not. It? You, oh. can, you will never oh. get Friday off. <laughs> okay. um, Mondays, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, you see a lot of people, these younger guys, that they come in and they're here two, three months at a job and they want something that... They're owed something. They're, yeah, like, like hey, I, I want to take Wednesdays off or... Oh, no, I need to sleep in past noon. I remember when Spencer first came here, you know, Spencer was, I said, hey, man, what, uh, what time do you usually get up in the morning? <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, pretty early, you know, 8, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I said, oh, okay, cool. And it just worked out. He had, within three weeks, every client that needed to train was like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., and we just gave them all to Spence. <laughs> And now, you know, getting now up early. Now when he doesn't have those clients, he comes in at 11. <laughs> you know, but getting up early to him <laughs> is no issue whatsoever because it just, it just took a little time. He figured out, you know what, okay, if I want to get paid, I'm going to get up early. And I'm going to take these clients that, that no one else can. And I think he enjoys it too. Yeah. If he didn't him, enjoy to make it even more. It also gives him an extra seven hours to train. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, but, it's 32nd Metcon on yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that old Spence will end up hurting just about all of us by the end of the year. You yeah. Know? So if you if you have any desire to overtrain, just come on and jump in with Spence, get your fill for three days, and uh, you'll be done. <laughs> uh, but guys, that is I, I hope 
I hope you enjoyed it. That, that kind of broke down the lessons uh, throughout those three stages of my life. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that there's some nugget that you can take and, and apply to a situation or a circumstance that you have. And if you've got a topic that you want us to talk about, shoot us an, a, a comment or an email and, uh, and we'll do it. Uh, but we hope you enjoyed this episode and the previous one, this little two-part series. How, they go, how would they message us? You can just email Philip. He'll put his email in the comments of okay. this video. All right. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.